Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm really excited for this week's studio vlog because I get to work on one of my favorite things, designing and building new art supply storage. Now I'm not entirely sure exactly what I'm going to be working on this week and how many things I'm going to be prototyping because I have a lot of different ideas and I'm not sure which ones I might just ultimately decide don't work out um, and just ones that I want to maybe save for later so it's not like a crazy overwhelming amount of new things right at once. The first thing that I'm going to work on because it's a fairly simple design is actually something that I did not ever have planned but I ended up getting a couple of messages within like the same week about this particular product and I guess a request for me to possibly look at making something like this and I figured that was a good enough sign for me to look into possibly doing it but that product is directly related to the Kuratake paints and somewhat the storage unit. This is my Kuratake palette tower so it's got my paints all in it. The whole thing that's sort of started this were actually the Kuratake pans themselves. Apparently there is quite a demand for these pans because they are a very strange shape. They are significantly larger than a normal full-size pan, so I completely understand that is why I have a Kuratake specific tower. Apparently a lot of people are really interested in just buying the individual empty pans, which they do not manufacture, which is kind of crazy, and that's obviously a pretty easy thing for me to prototype and manufacture. So that's going to be the first thing that I work on and I figured that while I am at it because you know I already have this whole system set up and I'm sure that there are people that are just more interested possibly in not necessarily the individual pans so much as the well sizes. I'm just going to then turn it into an insert for the Kuratake Towers for anyone that's interested more along the lines of that idea. Yeah, that's going to be the first project that we work on this week. Here are the finished prototypes for the Kuratake pans. Now they did sort of fall apart when I took them off of the print bed, but they all turned out really nice. They're nice and smooth, the perfect size. I will go grab a layer in a minute to show you what they fit like. But yeah, that turned out very well and also so did the insert. So same concept, just essentially all welded together. So it's really easy, you know, slide in and out. But here is one of my empty extra Kuratake layers. So as you can see, I do like them fitting snugly, but not so snug that you can't actually remove it if you want to. And the individual pans are the exact same size as the insert, so they should fit in this palette perfectly as well. And yeah, that is the first project of the week finished, and I guess on to the next one. Of course I had to have my most obnoxious sweater on for this, <laughs> oh well. The second thing that I want to look at designing this week is actually something that's been in the back of my mind for quite a while. It's a concept that I guess you could say I wanted to revisit and look at improving upon, and it revolves around this. Now, I'm not sure if anyone will remember this, but a couple of years ago now, probably, I ended up doing a video where I tested out 3D printed art supplies, and one of them was this brush holder. It was one of my favorite things in the video. What this is is essentially a thing that you just sit on your desk and when you are using like watercolor brushes or whatever, instead of them just sort of rolling all over the place on your desk, you can sit them on this thing so that they I guess somewhat have more of a designated space and it's just generally a more pleasant desk experience than them being everywhere. But the main problem that I somewhat had with this particular one and with most brush holders out there and definitely what the comment section had a problem with according to that video is that all of these brush holders have the brushes at an angle. This is a terrible thing to be attempting to show mid-air, so insert footage here. 
But the problem that all of these brush holders have is they hold the brushes at an angle, which when you are using a brush holder of this nature, you are presumably, if you are using the brushes and want to place them somewhere while you're not using them, are working with a wet brush, which means any of the extra water or moisture that is still on the brush is going to drip back down into the ferrule, which is death to a brush. It's really terrible for it. That's why when you are using watercolor brushes or you have washed your brushes, you should never immediately stand them back up if you have them held in some sort of cup or whatever, which is why laying your brushes willy-nilly all over your desk while you're using them, while not great looking, is actually very good for your brush because that water is not inherently going to be dripping back into the ferrule. But I think I have actually managed to come up with a good solution. Actually, two of them. Now, I unfortunately didn't film a lot of this process because I was pretty undecided as to how I was going to tackle this. I went through a lot of different design concepts, like for a whole lot of like crazy different things. I know you would think that this seems like a fairly simple thing to look at designing, but there's obviously a lot of different aspects of designing a product like this that you have to worry about. You know, I'm looking at the brushes and need to be parallel. It needs to be practical to manufacture and print, all of those kinds of things. My first design, which I guess you could call a direct response to this particular brush holder, is this. Now, I know this doesn't look like much because it really isn't, but the entire nature of this product and needing it to keep the brushes parallel to the desk meant that I unfortunately didn't have a lot to work with base-wise for this. But this is actually extremely strong, despite the fact that it is quite thin on the bottom there, which of course does mean that it fits the entire purpose of me wanting to redesign this one, keeps the brushes parallel to the desk so there is no issue with water. And the secondary good thing about this being a more minimal product is it is a very fast print job and it also doesn't use a ton of plastic. And that's even with upping the infill in this thing so that it was decently weighted and just was generally overall as sturdy as I possibly could get something to be at this sort of size of product. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out and that I could actually figure out a solution to, I guess, tackle this issue because I do really like this concept and it just freaked me out using it any of the time because I did not want to damage any of my brushes. Even the inexpensive ones, I was not willing to sacrifice the brushes just for the convenience of using this thing. So this, I'm sure, is going to be living on my desk 24-7 from now on. But I know I said I had two options and that's because when I was sort of like a base sketching out the rough designs for this one. I was a little paranoid that I wouldn't be able to make this strong enough or heavy enough, and so I was looking at possible alternatives to something along the lines of a brush holder. I was looking at towers, like a bunch of crazy things, and I guess along the lines of that mindset of looking at alternatives to just something that was sort of like a bar that sat on your desk to be able to sit your brushes on, I was starting to think about the idea of trying to incorporate something Thing with the palette towers because I know a whole lot of you really love those and my entire vision for those was to have eventually in the future you know accessories to go with them to work with them so you sort of had your entire painting experience be able to be encapsulated into one tower to take up the least amount of space on your desk in your collection whatever you might be using those for and so thinking along the lines of that I ended up coming up with this. Now, I'm not actually sure which of these two brush holders I'm more excited about. I do really like both of them because I know not everyone has the palette tower system, but I am really excited about this design, happy with how it turned out, happy that I could figure out something that would work with the palette tower system. Yeah, this is essentially a palette tower layer with a scooped edge so that you can lay your brushes in a designated space while you are using them. I went around my studio trying to find the largest a brush that I own to see if it would actually work in this, and all of the large ones that I could find fit perfectly, so this works for every brush that I own. This took a lot longer in the prototyping phase. I really wanted to create the perfect scoop shape, so there ended up being quite a few iterations, but this is the one that I decided on liking the most. So if you haven't used a palette tower when you are not using this brush holder, you can stack it with the rest of your 
your layers. I envisioned this ending up probably being people's top layer, so I made sure that when you have the lid on this, the scoops are completely hidden from sight, so it is a very uniform look across the tower. And like I mentioned earlier, I've always envisioned at designing and developing accessories for the palette towers. I'm super excited to introduce the first one, and I guess sort of as a side note tease, I ended up keeping the thickness of the layer the exact same as the other tower layers, one for uniformity, but also because I figured this brush layer would be the perfect possible layer to use as accessory storage. Now those other undetermined accessories are not going to be something that I work on this week, but it is something that I have been actively brainstorming, thinking about developing since I first designed the palette towers, and it's something that I am looking at actually developing and prototyping very soon. So there's your little tease, you know, future plans for this product other than it just being extremely functional as is. You know me, I always like to try and maximize the functionality of the existing products. Yeah, those are the two brush holder options. I really wanted to design and keep both of them as products that I manufacture because I know not everyone has a palette tower, even though some of you, even if you don't have a palette tower, might prefer this brush holder over the other one. Just wanted to keep those two options available for anyone that wants a brush holder in their life. So I just spent the last couple of days working on my fine liner test review video, which actually should be the last video on my channel before this one. So if you haven't checked that out yet, that will be carded here. I basically just put a bunch of fine liners to the test. And because this did take me a couple of days, I then realized now because most of these uh, fine liners were new, I have a whole lot of fine liners and no where to put them. So I decided to quickly whip up this little uh, organizer thing. It was really just like a slight modification hack of something I just found on Thingiverse. And I do like this concept, but as you can see, it just doesn't really fit some of the fine liners great. You know, it could just be improved for my usage. So I decided to go into Shaper 3D and whip up this. This works absolutely perfectly. As you can see, these were the pens that had a lot of issue. I measured them all out to figure, you know, what the biggest fine liner dimension was. Obviously, there's not that many of those ones, but I figured six pens per slot would be a good number so measured those out to be a perfect slot size and yeah here is the result it has the pens on an angle so you can read what their tip size is on all of them they fit a whole lot of different types of fine liners which is exactly what I needed considering you know the extensive test that I just did these Windsor and Newton ones are by far the longest and as you can see they fit perfectly the slots themselves are perfectly angled so when you put them in they're even still and yeah it's just really actually sturdy considering what it is and I'm really happy with how this turned out um, so I guess I have now unintentionally created a pen storage <laughs> unit for my shop as well I know if I don't put it available in my store someone's gonna ask about it so this is gonna be available right now too I guess and so yeah that is what this very unplanned pen storage unit looks like I am actually very tempted to create something like this, but for brushes. But I think that's enough for unintentional product design for this week. And clearly it wasn't. No, but really the more I thought about it, the more I basically figured why not do it for this video. I had a bit of a do it for the vlog moment, but hey, I was already designing all of these art supplies storage solutions. Why not do another one? So uh, that was a sentiment that clearly didn't last. <laughs> 
No, but really, the more I thought about it, the more that I personally really liked this concept, especially with all of the smaller brushes that I have. I tend to have my watercolor brushes in this container, which is sort of my more expensive and more used brushes, and then that one, which is my slightly less used brushes. And I just really like this concept of having like designated spaces, which I have a bit in here with that divider that keeps on falling. I can't tell you how many times I've glued that and it annoys the life out of me. So having these dividers for the different size brushes and just, you know, a lot of freedom within those, I designed these ones that they could fit like four of the really tiny sized brushes wherever they are, like really smaller uh, brushes. You can get like four of them in there, depending on how tiny they might be, you might be able to get more, um, or a couple of like more middle-sized brushes, those you can fit for middle-sized brushes or a couple of really large ones, and then these ones would just be for like really big ones. Um, but yeah, so this really was just a bit of a passion project just for me because I like the concept. I really don't know if I want to make this available because honestly, for what it is, it sort of took an unnecessary amount of time to print and plastic, but I like it. So this one at the very least is for me, which I was thinking about then because this is very much mine and what I want to use for my brushes to some degree. I was thinking about decorating this. Now obviously the first thing that I thought of was possibly pour painting it, but then I thought that was probably pretty impractical given that it's not exactly a flat, it's the same concept as the pens. I did change the angle though because I didn't like the crazy steep angle. It's not like crazy steep, that's like a 30 degree angle I believe, and this one was 13. Uh, so a much more shallow angle, but angled a bit so that you can actually see the brushes more easily when you are sitting down and you know, your brush holder is a little further away from you, it's easier to see them. But because it is angled, it means it's not exactly a flat and easy surface to paint other than it is four-sided. So I thought about taping up the sides, blah, 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 whatever. But what I think I'm going to do is actually print some vinyl. I have some printable vinyl that I think I'm gonna play around with and try and come up with some design, whether I just, you know, create vinyl uh, pieces to cover the sides with or, something along the lines of that. I decided to go with a very on-brand brush holder design. I grabbed my background that I use for basically all of my promotional stuff, like the Studio of MM background, and I want to do some geometric type pattern, so I decided to like follow the polygon lines that are sort of visible on my background artwork and create a PNG so that I could have my Cricut cut these lines out, and I figured I would have both sides be the opposite opposite thing. So one side would be the lines themselves and the other side would be the cutout triangles. Everything was going pretty well to this point. I did realize somewhere in the middle of this a slightly fatal flaw where I really wanted to use both parts of the cutout vinyl. I wanted to fully utilize the printed area without any waste where normally you would remove one of the parts and sort of transfer tape on the opposite part. So in theory, normally this piece that I'm removing here would sort of be the wasted piece, but I wanted to use that as decoration as well. So I did just peel that off and stick it on. It was in mostly one piece. Some of the edges weren't quite connected, but overall that wasn't a big issue to get stuck down onto the front side. But <laughs> the problems started to happen when I did eventually decide to transfer tape on the separate triangles that I had left. And oh my god, the transfer tape absolutely hated this stuff. I don't know if it is all printable vinyl or just this particular kind that I was using, but oh my god, do not recommend recommend. First of all, I forgot to remove the rest of the sheet that wasn't cut out, so already I wasn't like doing great with the choices I was making here. But that's also when I realized that the transfer tape stuck abnormally well to the vinyl. Normally, you do obviously want the transfer tape to stick to the vinyl, but the entire concept of how the transfer tape works is that the vinyl is going to stick more to the surface than it's going to stick to the transfer tape. And I realized when I was doing this, the transfer tape seemed to have been sticking abnormally 
abnormally well. I've seriously never had anything work like this, like go this badly with this transfer tape. I use this stuff all the time, so I know it's not the transfer tape. I've transferred many a decal onto an armor bin with this stuff, but I thought that it was just like sticking to the ink like really terribly, but I realized eventually that it stuck, like whatever there, there was a chemical reaction or something between the vinyl or the ink or whatever and the transfer tape itself, it was literally removing the adhesive from the transfer tape. Like you can see how sticky it is here. It literally peeled up part of the ink. It like separated the vinyl, which I didn't even know could happen. So this thing was crazy sticky once I did fight with getting it all off. So I decided to put this clear decal sticker paper over top of the back because it was just going to be a sticky mess if I didn't. Well, that was a disaster that I almost didn't manage to save, but considering the level of catastrophe that was ensuing, I don't actually think it turned out that bad. I'm sure a lot of people would say, you know, why didn't you sort of reverse and have the bigger galaxy pieces on the front and the more minimalistic design on the back? I kind of like the fact that there's a bit more white showing on the front so it isn't just like an overwhelming amount of color when presumably I'm looking at it the most frequently, you know, just a little hint of the galaxy. Uh, but yeah, now time to organize my brushes in this thing. Okay, I'm kind of really obsessed with how this turned out. It's actually like nowhere near full, but this I emptied out completely, this jar, and then I put some of my more fancy brushes and a few that were in here that I just generally tend to grab more that I didn't have in the other jar because, you know, some of my more mangy ones that I do actually end up grabbing because they're sort of my test brushes that I use for different swatch charts and stuff. I have my really puny brushes over here. I started sort of going by category. So I have my really tiny Winsor Newton Cotman brushes in this top corner because they are the absolute smallest that I have in my collection and they're just so easy to lose. So I do grab them quite frequently and so having them in the front there is good. We have my more fancy small brushes. So I have uh, a Neptune one, like one of the Princeton Neptune ones there, a couple of Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes. This, I just made the entire cubby a Winsor and Newton Series 7 brush cubby uh, just for ease, so I know that exactly which ones are the Series 7 brushes in this, since some of the synthetic ones look quite similar. This is just kind of a random synthetic smaller brush thing, some of my mop brushes, and then in the last two we have a some of my larger brushes that I don't necessarily grab as frequently because I tend to not paint absolutely massive pieces, but uh, when I need to, I'm obviously gonna grab those. So that's sort of the makeup. There's like way more uh, brush slots than I talked about, but that's just the general overview of this and obviously it might get reorganized, but for now that's what I'm going to be rolling with. It looks like a store display, which I personally really like and I think this is gonna be an incredible organization brush thing for me that I'm, well, I'm obviously going to use it all the time because all of my brushes are in it, but I think that the concept of the slots in that they are so organized is going to be massively helpful and I think I'm really going to enjoy using this. And that's going to be where I stop the art supplies designing for this week. All of these products with the exception of the brush storage will be available right now in my store if you are interested in any of them. In regards to the brush storage unit, I never want to be a gatekeeper, so if you are someone that is really interested in one, I'm looking at making them available as more of a custom order type of situation. So if you want one, you can email me. All of that info as well as the links to the other products will be in the description box. But anyways, thank you for once again joining me for another studio vlog and I will see you in the next video.